Hey everybody, I've got a few things for you today. A while back, Sin City Prepper sent mm -hmm. me a video uh, that was him and his daughter going to the Mormon food pantry. Right. It's called Home Services. Home Center. Home yeah, Food it. Center, I believe Home that's Home Food right. Center, that's it, yeah. Uh, and he walked through and what they were doing is they were putting canned goods mm -hmm. in like big, big amounts of food in cans. Mm -hmm and already prepped up, ready to go. And I'm gonna tell you right now, that is a, you'll be way ahead just to do that. It's yep. a pain in the butt to do it yourself. And apparently the prices were decent too. They weren't very expensive and they'll ship to your home. So, I mean, I'm like, cause I know I've tried to put up food and it is extremely hard. There's so many steps to it. So order from them, we get it shipped to your house. Yeah, and uh, they, another subscriber noticed that you couldn't really see uh, how much things cost uh, when he was walking through. So she sent me a price list and I'm gonna throw it up on the screen right now. But you can buy long-term food storage for food online and pay only $3 shipping. Cases of number 10 cans, six cans per case. That's amazing. So yeah, that's something that uh, if you're looking to buy food, that would probably really help you get a jump start on things. Yep, I agree. And while we're walking by this awesome oh, yeah. woodshed, I want you guys to check this out. Chris built, made this for me because I love to burn wood during the winter. And, and it so, doesn't matter if it's 70 <laughs> degrees outside or not. She's going to have a fire. I'm going she's, to have a fire. She's cooking me And I will times. stack the wood. So since I'm going to burn it, I will stack it. But show them what, how you built it and how it's so sturdy. And, well, I just took some 2 and 3 eighths pipe. I think it's amazing. I put the green coated pipe on the ground so it wouldn't rot as quick. And I just made a little woodshed. And the funny part is that's drill stem. It's super hard. Uh, and I couldn't get any uh, screws through it. You could, but it was real pain in the butt. So I actually welded the tin down and it's held up for a long, long time. So yeah, yeah it works. I can weld tin. It works. I love it. I love it. This is my woodshed. Every year I stack this baby up and burn the heck out of it. I've got a lot of wood to split. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that on the other side of the woodshed, but there's He's a bunch of it over cardio there. Cardio to Since do. Since we cleared the pond, uh, I've got a bunch to do and I've been so busy I haven't been able to get to it. But here's the next thing is five to 15% of net worth in precious metals. Uh, do you count the PMs in your net worth? That's a good question I told Chris. It's something that you just don't think about. We take for granted because we automatically assume you kind of know what to do or, or what you would expect. But that's a really good question. Okay, so yeah, if you're worth a hundred grand, you need to have ten thousand dollars in precious metals. That's of that hundred grand. Of the hundred grand. Yeah, that's so, what we think. Well, that's what the wealthy think. I'm not sure. telling you what to do. I'll never do that. But that's what the wealthy do. Ten right. to fifty percent, depending on what you think is going to happen. Right. Yeah. You know. So I hope that answers your question. Yep. One more thing before we go, talking about precious metals. I had two really cool items come up. We actually just bought one, I was telling Chris, about um, sometimes people are like, hey, how do you, well, pieces of gold are like so bulky and they're like so, they're, they're a big amount, so how do you move them? But what are you gonna do with them? We just had two really cool pieces come up where you could actually break off. One is you can break, break off a tenth of an ounce at a time for one ounce. It's kind of done in a sheet. And the other one is grams, and that's the one we actually just bought. You can, it's 50 grams and 1.6 ounces. So that's 50 pieces. And it's just you can a little bit off. more. The premium on the, oh, the whole, premium is super cheap. The whole sheet is about the same as an yeah. ounce. You're gonna, save, you're gonna save, I don't know how much money buying that on premiums. Well, uh, it, and, no, they do. Comparing gonna... it to grams, but yes. you just bought grams. If you bought 50 grams versus buying the sheet, absolutely, you'd buy, you'd do, yeah. yeah. You'd say premium. But anyway, it was just, we don't often get that kind of an item. You see it, it's called combi bars. C-O-M-B-I bars, if you look them up I'll the line. I'll a picture up right yeah, it's here. Yeah, it's a thin sheet. So I don't know how long they'll last. I don't know how long I'll have them. But um, yeah, I'm really excited. I can't wait to get my hands on it. So, but anyway, and then you had a really cool guy you were talking yeah, to. Yeah, so let me tell you about this. Okay. I met a guy in uh, New Orleans when we were at the investment conference. And I'm always looking around and trying to, I'm a social butterfly as my wife says. Yes, he is. And I don't really meet a stranger. And uh, it's really to my benefit because I meet the coolest people. And this guy strikes me, and I'm gonna I'm roll the footage in just a minute. He strikes me as a very genuine uh, when he was talking about his copper company that he was getting involved with, it's only been a company for like two months. It's brand new. The stock's like 25 cents. No, well, it's less than that now. 
but they're just getting started and he really didn't want to do a promotion. You know how a lot of these stocks we talk about will just, they'll do a big push. He didn't want to do that. And I really thought that was cool because he didn't want to have the big volatility of it going straight up and then back down and all that. Uh, the biggest part of it was they have 10 million in the bank. Mm, that's good. And it's in a 100% American copper company. Mm -hmm. So if you think we're going to need copper in the future and you, you want to invest in a company that's got a pile of money in the bank that can withstand a, a downturn, you might check this company out. I'm going to roll the footage, uh, but check it out and let me know what you think. And if you, if you watch the video and you like it and you think it's worth your time, put hashtag copper at the end because I, oh, yeah. this really struck me as a very genuine person that was uh, that found something that that needs to be looked at and brought up. Well, we've talked about how copper is, looks like it's going to run and there's a shortage a little bit possibly. And we're always looking for investments and we're always looking for ways always. to diversify. You have no idea how many people contact me daily to advertise for their company. It is unbelievable how many, I mean, it's probably five to one people want me to advertise to people that are actually reporting to ninjanation.com. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And I don't, I'm not going to talk about one unless I think it's going to make yep. us money. Or a way to, you know, it's legit. or a way to, uh, uh, you know, protect your money. Some right. type of gold and silver, uh, precious metals type deal. But anyway, I think I'll run it right now. Yeah, I'd like to hear. All it. right, guys, let me know what you think. Roll I've it. We've got a special guest. His name is Dan Schieber, correct? That's correct. Yeah. And he's got an interesting story on how he was able to make people a bunch of money, and that is what I want to do for you guys when I'm talking to these people at these conventions. Uh, that's it. That's what I want. I want to find investments that is going to really change people's lives in the future. And you've got a cool story. Would you mind enlightening us? Sure, Chris. Uh, uh, what, really wonderful to talk to you, your audience. Uh, I got started uh, about 17 years ago as an analyst for a gold fund in, in Germany. And uh, my job as an analyst was just to knock on doors and see which companies were good, which ones weren't. And, and the ones that would make the cut, we would invest in. And uh, luckily for me, I got started uh, just before the crash. So I, I gave my shirt up quite, quite soon in my career. And, and then 2009 was an incredible V-bounce recovery. And, and one of the uh, great investments we made was uh, Keith Neumeier's First Majestic at $2.30. Uh, the thing ended That's up running to 24. Love stories like this. So you mean you were able to buy a stock at two dollars and thirty cents? Yeah. And you were able to watch it go to 24. 24 bucks. Yeah. That's the kind of investments. Now we're not. I'm not trying to sell uh, Keith Newmeyer stock. But that's one of those things that really went for a rip. See, I know several people that have done this with crypto. You know, they made these small bets. Look at all these people. It's it's really a pretty place. We're in New Orleans, and we're just going to try to walk around and catch some of these buildings and people. But anyway, this isn't about Keith Newmar. This is about other investments. What what can we do as this thing collapses? As as we get into this weird environment, a lot of these companies are producing things that we absolutely have to have. Yeah, absolutely. And. Uh, we were talking about copper earlier. Do you have some facts on copper about, you know, how much we're going to need in the future and how much we have and well, supply and demand things? Absolutely. I mean, you know, if we really want to reach these goals of net zero, you know, each one ton of, of EV batteries needs about 250 tons of mined material. And so that's more tons that, than have, have ever been mined. And, you know, to reach those goals, it seems a bit far-fetched, but but copper, you know, copper is the non-critical metal that makes all those other metals critical. And you I've know, never heard it put like that. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, you can't substitute copper to to uh, to have conductivity and electricity. You know, and like you were pu putting it, Chris. You know, in this sort of recessionary period where we think, uh, where we see things slow down, the governments really need to activate infrastructure. You know, that's what they did 50, 60 years ago. They put in rail, you know. Now, you need copper to set up the electric infrastructure for mobility. Let's get away from the jackhammer. And, um, <laughs> it always <laughs> happens like that. Um, 
Anyways, copper is here to stay. It's, it's, uh, and it, more importantly, you know, we want to focus on U.S.-based production of copper. When he told me that earlier, I'm all in. I want to be, you know, I built a squat rack, the best, world's best squat rack. I'll have to actually make a video about it. Well, a lot of you already know. But I wanted to build something that was made in America. I Absolutely. wanted to build something that was 100% American made. And that's what he's doing with copper. That's right. That's right. That's our, incredible. I want to hear more. Our team has discovered in the past 30 or 40 million ounces of gold in Alaska. We love the United States because we are safe here and the rule of law is such that our title is our title. And, you know, in the area that we are in New Mexico, we're at the border with Arizona. Um, 80% of copper comes out of that part of the U.S., by the way. So this is copper country. And, you know, what we're trying to do here is with the experience of our team having discovered big mines, his name is Rick Van Neuenhaus from Nova Gold, uh, half of our market cap is cash at the moment. And that was the most interesting about your company, actually, is how much cash you had in the bank. This is important, guys. I'm always going to bring you this information right here. How much cash do you have in this company? 10 million. On the side. Yeah, 10 million at this time. Okay. Yeah. And why is this important? Because there's going to be trouble in the future. Everybody knows that. If you're watching my channel, you know that. But if you're buying solid companies that have a ton of cash in the bank, I've been talking to him about how frugal he is. <laughs> you're pretty tight, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty cheap. I'm pretty cheap. Well, we'll try not to say the word cheap. <laughs> but uh, that's the kind of companies that we really look at is the ones that have a ton of cash on the side. That means a whole lot. What else was there? Uh, what's your, um, how much is the company worth, market cap? Right now we're 20 million. Uh, and so we have 10 million in the bank, which makes our enterprise value 10 million. So it's a ground level investment. I mean, it really is. Where's 25 cents? I was waiting for that part. Yeah. 25 cents. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. This is one of those asymmetric bets. This is the ones I talk about. I even talk about crypto sometimes like this. It's, it's a, something that really has a lot of upside that you can get in and just kind of sit on, you know, and you don't have to invest a lot. You, you invest according to your convictions on what copper is going to do in the future, right? Because we got to have it. It goes, it's two to 500% more in the new electric cars. Does that sound right? That's right. And, uh, you know, more than that is, it's just finding a, an area, uh, uh, a project that is district scale, you know, it, Robert Friedland talks about this all the time. He says, you know, we need to have a multi-generational project. Right? He's talking about a 30, 40 year project. And the reason why this is important is because you want a project that withstands the waves of cyclicality and the metals prices. You know, copper was $2.30, went to $5. It's $3.50 right now. You know, before that it was $5 before as well. So you want a project that is economic throughout all these fluctuations. And the one thing that makes these things economic is grade. You know, how rich is the endowment of this copper? You know, the more concentrated it is, the less tons it's going to take you to extract. And that makes things, you know, profitable. So in our case, we are looking at production or past production, actually, of 2 to 8% copper, which is about 40 times more than most copper mines in South America. Wow. <laughs> So it's, it's rich. 40 times more? Yeah, yeah. So, so the grade is spectacular. What do they call that? What is the label on that grade? You know, they've got Bonanza grade for silver. Yeah, and... sometimes they call it DSO, direct shipping ore. So okay. you just pick it up and then you send it to the smelter. But uh, we're not at that stage yet. We're not at that stage yet. Right now we've just put the package together. The company's really just two months old. And uh, so this is ground floor copper in the US. Yeah. That's the main takeaway. Indeed, indeed. It's a 25 cent stock. I've been fortunate enough to invest in some things that went up 
and I, I've also been fortunate enough to watch them come down and learn lessons. <laughs> you know, we've all been there and done that, but this is the kind of asymmetric bets that I want to bring you guys. When I come out of these things, I always find one or two that are worth talking about. And I think this is something we should really look at, man. I really appreciate you, com appreciate you coming on Thanks, and talking Chris. about copper and yeah. how it's needed in the future. And, you know, there's not enough I can say about copper because we're going into the green weenie environment where we've got to have it. Everything's going to be electric. And, and you know, it's just it just makes sense to me. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's a great space to be in. We're at the right time. Uh, you know, the more noise we get out there about inflation and, and measures that need to be had, uh, is gonna slow down some things, but Dr. Copper, and they call it Dr. EV Copper now because it's the electrical vehicle side ah, of things. Okay. Uh, you know, is 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 necessary to to put the infrastructure in place. You know, you just can't get to the net zero goals that the administration has without, you know, implementing some new copper stories. And, uh, you know, that's going to give us some really interesting developments, too, and to see how permits are treated, too, you know. Um, permitting is a big hurdle in the United States, you know. It takes time to get these things online. Right. So, um, but I believe the, you know, the puck is going in our direction. Yeah. The puck is definitely moving in our direction. Well, and we try to be where the puck's going, right? Yeah. Try to get there early. And that's why your stock's at 25 cents. That's right. Because we're early. That's exactly the way I like to get there, is early. And uh, guys, I want to tell for all the new people that are on here that have been listening to me, uh, just know I'm going to do my best to bring you investments that are going to pay us to own them. I'm really pumped about this stock. And I'll put, uh, the, in, I'll put his company in the description. I'll pin it in the comments. Check them out and let me know what you think. Uh, Arc Signal, let me know what you think of this company. I really want to do our due diligence and pick the best ones. Have an awesome, awesome day. Thank you for coming on. Thank with you, me. Chris. Cheers. Later.